What are we doing today? Where are we? How do you say that? Antwerp. This is actually my fourth country that I've been to in Europe. My fourth country. You love to see it. How many countries have you been to? In Europe only. Uh, well, four Netherlands. Okay, that's Belgium, one. Belgium. Germany. Germany. France. France. Uh, Say France again. France. France. <laughs> what else? Spain, of Spain, Turkey, Turkey. That was Asia, though. No, part of it is Europe. Okay, that's six. Italy. Oh, Italy. And you just completely oh blocked God. that from your memory. So that's seven countries. I'm on your ass. The only reason why we're even here is because whenever I booked the trip to the Netherlands, I wasn't sure how strict the immigration was going to be, or border control, whatever you want to call it. And I figured I needed proof of onward travel to justify my trip to the Netherlands. So I booked two train tickets to Antwerp. Honestly, I wasn't even planning on using them. I was just planning on using them for immigration and nothing else. But lo and behold, we ended up using them. Now we're here. It actually only cost, I think, 26 euros to come here. Which is not that far of a train ride, but that's kind of crazy. You put that into perspective, most Americans... Was that one way though? Yeah, that's one way. I think coming back it's 40 euros, something like that. But we just booked those a few days ago. But listen, most of my friends back home have never even left the country. There's a lot of Americans that have never left their state. So the fact that we can just hop on a train and casually pop out to a different country in the same day Listen, these people out here screaming, I don't know what's going on. Belgium is a whole different vibe, but I want to know what's the difference between Belgium and the Netherlands? From a Dutch person's perspective, what's the difference? Because honestly, to me, it kind of looks the same. I mean, there's some minute differences, mostly in the architecture, but as far as the structure of the place, it just looks the same. And honestly, most places that I've been to in Europe, maybe Valencia being the lone exception, looks pretty similar to one another. Switzerland, Belgium, Netherlands, they all have the same sort of vibe and a similar layout. Well, I feel like the Netherlands is more modern. I agree. Um, cleaner. You think it's cleaner? Yeah. I feel like Belgium looks pretty clean. Yeah, but. Oh wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. What did you say about restaurants that have the food menu on the outside like that? Yeah, what did you say? Me. Why not? What's wrong and with look them? Look at the glass and, the, and look at the... <laughs> Any type of restaurant got broken glass like that. What else? Like in terms of infrastructure? Just in terms of life. People in Belgium tend to be the stereotype. Is that they're more polite. They're more polite? Yeah. Okay. What do you mean by strict? Or more like, yeah, just like don't do crazy things. Okay. When Netherlands are also kind of like that. As in the wild thing. Yeah. I feel like that's just a European thing in general, though. The do normal thing. I'm gonna make a whole video about no, my. No, Spain is different because when I was in Spain. Like, people are just out there dancing and stuff. I feel like it's embedded in the culture, though. I feel like there aren't too many people... There are people, of course. There are exceptions, but... From what I've seen in Europe, people tend to conform more. It's just the culture itself might be different. But in Spain, you might see more variation, more deviation from the culture. But I don't think it's anything like the U.S. in that regard. But... That's the train right there. Some of these buildings. <laughs> Bro is heated. I don't know what's going on. That's how you know we're not in Brabant anymore. Look, when I was in America, the vibe was definitely Yeah. But the thing is, I didn't really take you anywhere in the US. No, but still. You didn't really see 
how people are. How people are. Yeah, we, we didn't want these new ones. No. Because we couldn't afford it. But now we're making up for lost time. We basically just made a lap. Yep. That's the Ferris wheel, I guess. They just have a Ferris wheel next to the train station for whatever reason. I wonder how much the Ferris wheel costs. I don't know. I don't want to go up there, though. Why not? I'm scared of I don't meet. I think that's the suit. Huh? Where? Like, like, uh, There's too much going on. Okay. Like so you have a zoo, you have a Ferris wheel, and a train station. Yep. And yeah, then there was a chocolate uh, museum that I've been to. They have really good chocolate. Honestly, like I said, we don't have any sort of concrete plans. We're literally just here. And we didn't really have time to map out any sort of plans because. We were just on the brink of missing our train and the bus all day. They got these bikes over here. I can't really access those or really anything else that requires any sort of data because on my Dutch prepaid plan, I do not have, well, at least as far as I'm aware, I'm not allowed to use it internationally. I turned data roaming off because I'm not paying any sort of exorbitant fees. So, I don't really know what we're gonna get into. I can't look up anything. We're just relying on her phone, which I think is what, 50% battery? <laughs> last time I checked. And that's to last us the rest of the day. So, yeah, we'll be fine, but don't know what we're gonna do out here. But that's the adventure. Yep, this is how I like to travel. I like to travel without a plan. I like to just pop out and figure it out as I go. And so now she's getting a taste of that. And we'll see how much she likes it. But they got the jewelry right there. Okay, that's probably fake, but no one has to know. Did people ever do the diamond testers in the Netherlands? Was that ever a thing? I've never seen it. That was a whole era back home. People would be at the mall with the diamond testers. They got me one time with my earrings. Yeah, they got me. I told them. I told them before he interviewed me. I said, bro, I'm going to let you know right now. Yeah, I don't care. <laughs> it's glass, but I'm going to let you get your content off. I figured it was good karma because I was doing my public interview that same day. But I'm not going to lie. None of this is going up. I'm going to scrap this video. I'm going to sell the camera. I'm quitting YouTube. Strofe waffle or a Belgian waffle? Depends where they're from. You gotta answer the question. Are we talking about a, a store bod stroopwafel? This is an A or B type question. <laughs> no. It's not open ended. Is it a store bod stroopwafel and a store bod? In general. Belgian waffle. Trader. <laughs> Belgian waffle. We got a trader. <laughs> well, listen. Stroopwafel from the market. Stroopwafel from the market. I still haven't had a stroopwafel yet. Yeah. I think we should make a video where I try Dutch food. Yeah. The only thing is I'm vegan, so it makes it a lot more difficult to find Dutch items, or certain Dutch items at least. Yeah. I haven't found vegan stroke waffles. I have tried Freakin' Del Brogia. I don't really know what it is, but I like it. I tried Bitterballen, yeah. which to my knowledge is pretty much the same thing as croquettes. What else is there? <laughs> oh yeah, Stampot. Zirkel stump pots. Yeah. I like all of them thus far. I'm not really a picky eater though. Didn't you say something about a beer tap that goes underground or something like that? Here? Yeah. <laughs> I went to a school. I went to, I think it was in Rouge. <laughs> and we went to this beer, I don't know what you call it in English, like a, a brewery. A brewery? <laughs> and they took us a whole tour how they make the beer and where they store it yeah and then how it can gets transported and it transports under the ground yeah. i kind of want to see it i don't drink personally i don't drink beer but that'd be interesting to see yeah but where are we would this be a plane yeah okay so this is a plane for anyone who doesn't know if you only speak english that translates to square but not like the shape though right but it's more of a plaza type thing yeah yeah 
Yeah, we don't really have a lot of these in the U.S. I feel like, at least not in Dallas. So what are you, what are you thinking so far? I'm a little overwhelmed because there's a lot of movement around me. Yeah. I'm not really used to that. Yeah. I feel like I'm in Times Square or something. What do you think? But we're in Belgium. Of Belgium. I like it so far. Very different from the U.S. But yeah, I don't know. I haven't really had enough time to really digest the experience yet. We're just out here living life. Traveling. We're definitely going the wrong way. There is no wrong way when you're on an adventure. That's the beautiful thing. We don't have a destination, so we can't be going the wrong way. We can only be going the right way. As long as we're not staying where we're at, we're going the right direction. I'm not gonna lie. This is the most European moment I've had. We're sitting here in the climb, eating bread, people watching. Yeah. That's very, very, very European. Yeah. Not in the climb while eating bread, no. We are about to go into the stores because it's cold and we don't really have anything else to do. Honestly, like I said, we didn't plan this trip out. We're just here, just yep. winging it. So we're just gonna go in the stores, but before we do that, we should leave them with some tidbits of information about the differences between Belgia and Nederland because they are not the same. Not all European countries are the same, contrary to popular belief. We got people out here. That's one thing that I've noticed. I feel like people here are more outgoing in general, for better and for worse. We've had people help us, we've had people ridicule us, yeah. all within the span of the past hour and a half. But people are definitely more outgoing here than they are, at least in the city where we live, in the Netherlands. Which might have more to do with the population. It's just a bigger city, so people tend to be more outgoing just by virtue of being around more people, being more comfortable around people. But that was definitely a bit of a culture shock for me as far as Belgium goes, because I wasn't really expecting that. People to just kind of jump into our conversations and help us out for lost, things like that. That's something that I've come to associate with the US. But I don't know, you have anything you want to add to that? I've been to bigger cities, obviously in the Netherlands. Yeah. It wasn't meeting like that. Yeah. <laughs> I've been to Amsterdam one time whenever I first landed in the Netherlands and I didn't encounter anything like that at all. Yeah. Whatsoever. As a matter of fact, Amsterdam didn't feel as lively as Antwerp, but we might not have gone to the right places. I'm sure there are places where it's even more crowded than here. Mm. But that's definitely been my biggest culture shock thus far. Also, I've noticed that the people here are a lot more fashionable in general. Of course, this is completely subjective, and I'm not saying that Dutch people aren't fashionable because Dutch people are still very far ahead of Americans best belief no. but I don't know I feel like people here they have more of a fashion forward type vibe I don't really know what that means but that's the best way I can explain it I still see a lot of people looking at me and stuff see that goes <laughs> to show that's another culture shock right there let me just interrupt myself I can tell people here are not used to seeing cameras it's not necessarily a good or a bad thing but it's definitely different than the Netherlands because maybe it's just a matter of people being again more outgoing so they're more willing to showcase their lack of familiarity mm -hmm. with seeing this sort of thing. But it definitely makes me uncomfortable still. I've never become comfortable vlogging in public, no matter how many videos I've made in public. I'm never, yeah, I'm never comfortable doing this. But I wasn't comfortable moving to the Netherlands either. <laughs> so that's just basically my life right now. We're out here breaking out of our comfort zone yep. every single day. And Fashion, yeah. A lot of people here have drip. Now, do you guys use that term, drip? Yeah, a lot of people here have drip, meaning that they have more of a, just, what's the word? <laughs> I don't know what the right word is, but basically, they're not just dressing for utilitarian reasons. They are dressing because they want to be seen in the clothes that they're wearing. And one thing that I really like about Europe is that when people wanna 
have drip, they're not necessarily just putting on a bunch of designer stuff. Whereas I think in America, at least where I'm from, whenever people want to show out, they're just putting on as much designer stuff as possible. It's not about how good the outfit looks, it's about how much it costs. But it's just, it doesn't really work. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. A lot of these clothes that the designer companies are selling are just not it. Yeah. But these people are probably out here shopping at H&M, Zara, what's another store? It doesn't really matter how much it costs, it's just about your, how well you can match things. Yeah. She has the drip, she has the, nice. the European drip. <laughs> It's different, man. People in Europe just dress different, bro. It's a whole different type of intention behind their outfits. Things like scarves and the accessories, how they put things together. <laughs> no, but when it's cold in Dallas, people don't wear scarves. They just stay inside. I'm saying all this to say, people out here have drip. And I've never been to France, at least not yet. But I imagine that this is probably how French people dress. But it's also mixed with how Dutch people dress, in a sense. It's less out there than maybe French people might be, especially in a, well, a place like Paris, where you have Fashion Week. I but mean, it's just hyped up, because when I went to Paris, maybe it also depends on when you go or something. But. Yeah, probably just Fashion Week. And plus, maybe a lot of those people who dress like that are really from other places. But if I'm not mistaken, the Italians are known for dressing the best, right? Yeah. Yeah, so we might have to go to Italy she has very, very negative memories in Italy. No, I'll just that's leave it at that. True. No, it is true. That doesn't mean she doesn't like Italy. Yeah. But you just don't like that one place that like, you went to. I liked Italy the most and the least. So you didn't like it? No, like... <laughs> that's basically one, what you're saying. <laughs> one vacation was the best, one was the worst. But Italy is a country, it's really nice. Yeah, I'm sure it is. It's on my list, for sure. It's but still it on my list. it is kind of not really modern. Like, when you want to go yeah. on a bus in Italy, it's a whole different experience than here. Yeah. You have to go to a coffee shop thing to get a bus ticket. A coffee shop to get a bus ticket is crazy. <laughs> One thing I'll say, the way that I like to compare countries is I like to take them in the context of other places I've seen. So... Let's say, for example, Belgium, at least Antwerp. I don't know about the rest of Belgium, but Antwerp, it kind of reminds me of, it's more on the Valencia side of the spectrum than the Zurich side of the spectrum. And what I mean by that is Zurich was very sterile. I won't say it lacked character because it definitely didn't, but it wasn't as lively, at least when I went. And it felt a lot colder. And I don't mean that in the temperature sense climate it was cold but it was more of a general feeling just yeah. the ambience was very cold and i guess that makes sense because it's a very rich area and the people are probably more what's the word they just like to keep to themselves that sort of vibe whereas in spain people are warmer people are just out and about having fun I feel like Belgium is a lot more lively in that sense. The Netherlands is right in the middle. It's probably right there in the middle. Definitely doesn't feel cold like Switzerland did, but it's not as lively and outgoing as Spain mm -hmm. or I'm assuming Italy probably. Yeah. Just the warmer countries in general. So. I don't know. I think it's really cool to see how all of these places are so different and yet they're all so close together. Because we're literally only, what, yeah, an hour drive from cultures. where we live? Yeah. yeah. But in the US, it's not like that. It, literally, to put this into context, from where I lived in Dallas, if you drove eight hours west, you were still in Texas. Eight hours west, you are still in the state. It took, I think, 10 to 12 hours to get out of Texas going west which is ridiculous. Yeah. 12 hours from where we are in the Netherlands, where would that take us? Somewhere. Probably Italy down there, right? Yeah. 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 About Italy or somewhere in Spain. Yeah, because 
if I'm not mistaken, Paris is what, a five hour drive? Four hours, I think with the car. <laughs> See, that's great. See, four hours from Dallas is Houston. I'm still trying to wrap my mind around how small Europe is and how you can get to all these places so quickly and so easily because you have the train and everything. But I'm looking forward to seeing more places for sure. So what'd you think? <laughs> I mean, it was nice. It was nice to be out somewhere different. I'm glad to be going. Look, she's trying to be politically correct. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to speak for both of us, but I'm ready to go back to the Netherlands. It's kind of crazy to think about the Netherlands feeling like a comfortable place for me now. Yeah. The Netherlands is That's essentially home. Yeah. The Netherlands feels like home.